Number 10. The Devil's Bible The Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, is the largest medieval manuscript in the world. Most historians agree that the entirety of the manuscript was created by a single monk from Bohemia, which is modern-day Czechia. And while the ridiculous size of the book makes it remarkable in itself, the inexplicable portrait of Satan is perhaps the strangest part of the whole thing. The manuscript was created in the 13th century, originally stored in a special monastery, and contained within the pages are the New Testament, the Old Testament, and an assortment of strange texts addressing exorcism, medical works, and even grammar. It's kind of completely bizarre. In this day and age, it might not seem that extraordinary for a single person to write a giant book, but 620 pages of work in the 13th century is unheard of. If the monk worked for six hours a day, six days a week, it would have taken him about five years to complete the writing. However, historians believe it likely took at least 30 years for him to actually finish the book. Between breaks, the immense decorating of the manuscript, the artistic renderings, and the plotting and writing itself, it likely took most of the monk's life to finish. But the real mystery here is what the Dark Lord is doing within the book. The fully colored drawing takes up a full page and nobody has any idea why the monk added it. Maybe he thought it would be funny, maybe he just started drawing it and decided it should just go in the book. But whatever the case, the Devil's Bible is currently protected inside the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm. Number 9. 15th Century UFO Everyone loves the Mona Lisa and the Sistine Chapel, but there is another piece of artwork out there that deserves a lot of attention. I'm talking about the Madonna with St. Giovannio painted by Domenico Ghirlandaio in the 15th century. At first glance, the painting does not appear out of the ordinary. The Madonna immediately catches your attention. But if you look beyond her left shoulder, you can see very clearly what appears to be a UFO hovering in the sky. And while it's easy to dismiss the splotch of black paint as an accident or maybe even a bird, if you look even closer, you'll notice a man and his dog gazing upward at the object. The man even seems to be pointing directly at it. So what could this mean? Did the painter witness a UFO in the 15th century? Some people suggest that the Madonna has positioned herself in the painting in such a way so that she shields the children from the unidentified flying object. But again, what could that mean? The truth is that nobody really knows what the object in the painting is or why it was placed there. Artists usually have their own interpretations and meanings going on when they create a piece of artwork like this. So it's very possible that the truth of the matter died with the artist hundreds of years ago. Number 8. The Tunguska Explosion Next up is something beyond boggling. On June 30th of 1908, the sky exploded and to this day, nobody knows why. The incident occurred in a remote region of Siberia, and those who still remember the incident refer to it as the Tunguska Event or the Tunguska Explosion. It all went down first thing in the morning, when an explosion rocked the eastern Siberian taiga. The blast flattened somewhere around 80 million trees and affected an area of roughly 830 square miles. According to witnesses, there was a massive fireball, a flare of light even brighter than the sun, and a sound so robust it was deafening. This shockwave was so powerful that people were knocked off their feet and windows were shattered for hundreds of miles around. But here's the mystery. This was 1908. There were no nuclear weapons. There was no man-made device that could cause such a catastrophe. And when investigating the area, nobody could find a crater. It seemed that the sky literally exploded. Many astrologists believe that what actually happened was an incoming comet that exploded inside the atmosphere just three miles above the surface of the Earth before making impact. The comet would have been about the size of a five-story building and likely entered the Earth's atmosphere at about 33,000 miles per hour. But this is just a theory. Nobody truly knows what happened. It could have been a comet, it could have been something unexplainable, and it even could have been aliens. What do you think? Number 7. The Hinter Kai Fek Massacre Even in the early 1900s, it was still hard to get away with murder. Police were diligent, witnesses were willing to talk, and there weren't exactly airplanes for people to make a clean getaway. But there was something truly horrific that went down in Germany in 1922 and has yet to be explained. It happened at a small farm about 43 miles from Munich. This was a small and quiet place, far from any violence or danger. The farm was operated by the Gruber family, and on March 31st, an unknown person or persons murdered every last Gruber in one of the most tragic and confusing cases in serial killing history. And the murders weren't ordinary either. Each member of the family, six in total, was lured one by one to their death inside of a barn and killed. 
After that, the family maid and her baby were also murdered. It wasn't for a week that neighbors stopped by to check on the family after none of them had been seen, only to stumble upon the gruesome carnage. The police were called in, they launched an investigation, and they interviewed over 100 suspects. In fact, the Munich police interviewed a suspect as recently as 1986. That's over 60 years after the incident. But still, the case has yet to be solved. But it gets even weirder. Six months before the murders, the original maid at the farm had quit because of hearing voices. The maid believed the house was haunted. Whether this has anything to do with the murders or not, nobody knows, but it's definitely a little strange. Number 6. Time Traveling Hipster What do hipsters in the 1940s have in common? The answer is absolutely nothing. Nonetheless, a picture has recently surfaced of a hipster who apparently traveled back in time to 1941. The image first cropped up online in 2004, and you can very clearly pick out the man who does not belong in the photo. While everyone else is wearing old-timey clothes, this guy appears to have sunglasses, a hoodie, and an ordinary t-shirt. He's also carrying what appears to be a handheld digital camera. At first glance, it most certainly looks like someone from the hipster future figured out a way to go back in time and take photographs. Could this be a form of tourism from the future? The answer is an astounding no. According to Snopes.com, this photograph has actually been debunked. The guy may look like a time traveler, but all his attire is actually fitting for the 1940s. It's just the way the picture looks that makes the guy so out of place. First, there was a portable camera available in 1941 from Kodak. It's not a surprise at all that he had a portable camera. After all, the guy did show up in a photograph likely taken by a portable camera. There were also special sunglasses with side shields available in the 1940s, though they may not have been that popular. And as for the t-shirt, well, it appears to bear the logo of an NHL team that operated between 1924 and 1938. So really, it's just a total coincidence, and it's not a time traveler at all. Number 5. The White House UFO Attack In the year 1952, Washington, D.C. was besieged by flying saucers. The general public has mostly forgotten about this weird and mysterious extraterrestrial event. It happened in the summer, and the press and public alike demanded answers for the unexplained crafts that swarmed the White House several days in a row. The sightings were so plentiful that mainstream newspapers reported the phenomenon. But not only did civilians see the crafts, they were also spotted by special intelligence units within the United States Air Force. It all started at the Washington National Airport on July 19th, when an air traffic controller spotted seven objects on his radar screen that came from out of nowhere. It literally looked like a fleet of flying saucers. At the exact same time, people were seeing bright lights zipping at incredible speeds above the White House. A pair of F-94 interceptor jets were scrambled to make contact with these mysterious objects, but they couldn't catch them. The blips on everyone's radar screens disappeared and nobody managed to physically identify the UFOs with their eyes. The incident was national news. Everyone in the country knew that there were unidentified flying objects being chased through the skies of DC. However, the Air Force came out and said that there were no UFOs at all and everyone should just calm down. Eventually, everyone forgot about the incident. And to this day, we still don't know what the UFOs were. Number 4. A Real Demon Possession Moving on from the extraterrestrial to the paranormal. In Indiana in 2011, a woman named Latoya Mons moved into a new home with her mother and her three children. Then she started to hear footsteps in the basement. According to the report from the Daily Mail, one by one, Latoya and her children became possessed. A clairvoyant was called into the home, at which point it was determined that at least 200 demons were haunting the house. And while this sounds like the horrible plot from a budget horror movie, what makes it so strange is that the people who were supposed to be possessed actually ended up in the hospital. According to several news sources, one of Latoya's possessed children, a nine-year-old boy, walked backwards up a wall and ceiling while the medical staff at the hospital looked on in disbelief. There were also instances of children floating above beds, having unnaturally deep voices and acting erratically. The chaos didn't end until an authorized Catholic priest came into the hospital and performed an exorcism. Now, you can believe what you want, but this apparently really happened. And because we're dealing with demons, there's no scientific way to confirm a possession. But considering the number of witnesses and the amount of press, this might be the best documented possession case in the USA. Number 3. The Hook Island Sea Monster One of the more bizarre mysteries out there in the world is the Hook Island Sea Monster. 
The original photograph of this monster was taken in 1965, and it looks kind of like a tadpole except that it's larger than a shark lurking just beneath the water. The picture was taken at Stonehaven Bay on Hook Island in Queensland. Witnesses reported that the beast was at least 30 feet long and behaved just like an underwater snake. But here's where things get weird. After it was spotted a few times in the 1960s, nobody ever saw it again. The legend of the monster dried up and became mostly forgotten. It's very possible that whatever monstrosity had been living in the bay either died or went into hiding. And what makes this such a convincing case is that the photograph taken of the beast came from a time when there was no Photoshop. Something massive was definitely spotted, we just have no idea what it was. Number 2. Exploding Siberian Craters in a remote part of the Arctic Circle, random wounds are appearing in the melting permafrost. According to the report from the BBC, there appear to be random holes exploding into existence all across the landscape. It's a mysterious event that scientists say should be worrying to the entire planet. Some of these random holes are at least 164 feet deep and around 66 feet wide. The prevailing theory is that the permafrost melts and shifts below the surface, and that causes huge explosions. Blocks of ice and soil are tossed hundreds of feet through the air due to a sudden buildup of intense pressure. But scientists can't really figure out why or how it's happening. This is especially worrying for people who live in this remote area. Because imagine standing directly over the place where the Earth randomly just explodes. If a person were standing at the site of the explosion, they'd be blown to pieces. Hopefully, with more scientific research, scientists can determine what's causing the buildup of pressure underground and what it means for the future of our planet. If the ground is literally blowing apart as if hit with a cannon, I mean, that doesn't really sound very good, does it? Number 1. The Venus Event The last story for today takes us off the planet. New research is suggesting that Venus was once an inhabitable planet. Scientists are now saying that billions of years ago, Venus had oceans of water and land masses that could have supported life. However, something happened that changed the surface of that planet. Scientists don't know what this mysterious event was, but they claim that whatever happened changed the entire planet and turned it into an inhospitable death trap. The oceans were destroyed, the atmosphere became toxic, and the surface temperature rose to about 864 degrees. Just for the record, that's hot enough to melt lead. Even though Venus is often referred to as Earth's twin because both planets are of similar size, the comparisons kind of end there. What's really fascinating about this discovery is that Venus basically looked like Earth for roughly 3 billion years. That's long enough for complex life forms to take root and thrive. That means that there could have been dinosaurs and maybe even monkeys or humanoid creatures living on Venus. It even could have looked like Earth looks today. But the new study says that somewhere around 700 million years ago, a biblical event triggered a massive release of carbon dioxide and almost instantaneously terraformed the planet, destroying its habitability and turning it into a hot ball of toxic gas. The only question remaining is whether this will happen to our planet and if so, when? Michael Carroll purchased a lottery ticket at the age of 19 and won the $9.7 million jackpot in the year 2002. That's a lot of money to win at the age of 19. And while to somebody sensible, winning around $10 million at the age of 19 would mean he'd be set for life, Michael is now 36 and working seven days a week after he blew the entire fortune. And to make things even worse, Michael Carroll is now a coal delivery man working in Scotland. And while at first that may seem unfortunate, Michael told local news outlets that he's actually happier than he's ever been. After milking all that money for 10 years of fun, the funds finally run out. Michael blew the entirety of his money on booze, ladies, some illicit substances, and his friends. He became a hardcore drinker, spending so much of his time in foreign places doing foolish drunken things that his marriage was brought to a swift end. And this is incredibly unfortunate because the woman he was married to at the time was seven months pregnant when Michael won the lottery. Besides losing his wife, he gave away roughly four million dollars right away, with one million to his mother, one million each to his aunt and uncle, then one million to his ex-wife. By 2012, he was broke and kicked out of all of the pubs in his area. He then moved to Scotland where he now rents a small apartment by himself and walks to work. Number 9. Americo Lopez Americo Lopez is the typical greedy scumbag. He and his co-workers in a construction company in New Jersey had been taking part in a lottery pool since 2007. In 2009, Lopez discovered that he had the winning ticket in his hand. 
but rather than willingly share the $38.5 million with his colleagues, he claimed he purchased the winning numbers on his own, and not as part of the company pool. As you can imagine, his co-workers were pretty upset about this, and they absolutely took Mr. Lopez to court. The jury then decided that Lopez would pay each of his co-workers a pre-tax of $2 million. He actually got off really easy. All of his co-workers testified against him, including people who were not part of the lottery pool. They all claimed that he was given money to purchase tickets on the day that he purchased the winning ticket. The big issue here is that nobody could say for certain whose money was used in the buying of the winning ticket. So Lopez got off easy. He walked away with around $20 million, which he should have had much less of. In the end, Lopez turned out to be not quite as stupid of a lottery winner as he was just kind of a jerk. He actually ended up winning more money than he was supposed to, though now he probably doesn't have any friends. Number 8. Tonda Dickerson Tonda Dickerson was working in an Alabama Waffle House when her life changed forever. The year was 1999, and one of her customers gave her a lottery ticket as a tip. At the time, Dickerson was a divorced woman in her late 20s. A week after she got the lottery ticket for a tip, she won the $10 million Florida lottery. That's a pretty generous tip for just serving somebody a plate of waffles. But rather than take the lump sum, she decided to take $375,000 for 30 years. She thought she would never have to work again. However, she quickly found herself stuck in a whole bunch of legal battles. All of a sudden, everybody thought they had a claim to the money. Her colleagues tried to take the money from her in court, saying that because the lottery ticket was part of a tip, that it should be shared equally. Even the guy who gave her the lottery ticket as a tip tried to claim the money for himself like a greasy little weasel. Unfortunately, the court case in 1999 decided against Dickerson. She was forced to split the money with her co-workers. Then things got really weird with her ex-husband, who she had divorced two years earlier, but was shot while trying to kidnap her. Her ex-husband stole her, drove her to a boat launch, but Dickerson managed to reach into her purse and pull out her gun and shoot him in the chest before he got her onto the boat. In the end, it's unclear how much money she got away with, but there have been reports that all these years later, Dickerson is working somewhere in a casino as a poker dealer. Have you ever played the lottery? Did you ever win anything? Or do you know anyone who's ever won big playing the lottery? What's their story like? Tell me some of your own personal experiences with gambling in the comments below. Then be sure to subscribe to Worldlist for more amazing videos just like this one. Number 7. Evelyn Marie Adams You would think that after somebody won the lottery the first time, they would stop buying lottery tickets. But a woman named Evelyn Marie Adams won the New Jersey State Lottery one year, then hit the jackpot again the next year for a total of $3.9 plus $1.4 million. This was back in 1986, and nobody has had such amazing luck since. According to the original New York Times article, the odds of this happening to Evelyn were 1 in 17 trillion. It's like hitting red in roulette 400 times in a row. And while it might seem like winning the lottery twice would make you set for life, the government always gets their greedy little fingers in there. The government actually surprised Evelyn with a massive tax bill for the remaining 30% of what they were owed, as they initially only took 20% of her winnings. I won't get started on the fact that the government taking 50% of someone's lottery winnings is completely ridiculous, but in any case, Evelyn spent the majority of her money on travel, became a professional gambler, tried to win back the money she lost from taxes, and according to CBS News, now lives in a trailer park and works for a food services company. Even winning the lottery twice can't stop a person from going broke. Number 6. Willie Hurt Willie Hurt won the lottery in 1989. He won $3.1 million in the Michigan Super Lotto draw. But after only two years, Willie was not only broke, he was also accused of killing a human being. He was arraigned in September of 1991 on open murder charges for the death of Wendy Elizabeth Kimmy, who'd been shot in the head. The woman's body had been found on the floor of a hotel in a rooming house where Willie had been renting a room for several weeks. Even though he was the winner of a lottery jackpot, he was still living in a rooming house. This was because Willie spent all of his money on drugs and alcohol. Apparently, Willie and Wendy had gotten into an argument because Willie was angry that they'd run out of their illicit substances. And the argument ended with Wendy dead on the floor. Willie allegedly signed a confession, but unfortunately, we have no idea what happened to him. After the initial argument, not a single news source had any interest in Willie Hurt. Nobody has any idea what happened to him, but it's safe to say he spent a significant amount of time behind bars. Number 5. Billy Bob Harrell Jr. Billy Bob won the lottery in June of 1997. He won $31 million from the Texas lottery. 
At the time, Billy Bob had been stocking the shelves at his local hardware store and struggling to provide for his wife and their three children. Normally, when he bought lottery tickets, Billy Bob used the birthdays of his children. But on the day he won, he claimed that he let the computer do the picking instead. Then he agreed to take his winnings annually, earning $1.4 million every year. Billy Bob purchased a ranch, other homes for his family members, new cars for himself, his wife, and his children, and he donated a generous amount of cash to his church. Unfortunately, money never turns out to be a very good thing. Everyone he knew wanted money from him, and Billy Bob apparently spent way too much of his winnings. He divorced his wife and married a younger woman, and then he died under mysterious circumstances. At the time of his death, Billy Bob didn't even have enough money left to pay the estate taxes on his house. Before his unfortunate demise, he told his financial advisor that winning the lottery was the worst thing that had ever happened to him. And so let this be a lesson for all of us, money definitely doesn't buy happiness. Number 4. Luke Petard Imagine working at McDonald's, winning the lottery, and then going back to work at McDonald's. This seems like something out of a person's worst nightmare, but according to Luke Petard, he went back to work at McDonald's because he got bored. This guy won over $2 million at the young age of 23, then claimed that he got bored of shopping and spending time with his family and was having more fun earning a small wage at McDonald's. This guy lives in Wales in the United Kingdom, and one of his other complaints was that he simply began getting too fat because he stayed at home all day eating with nothing to do. In fact, Luke went on working for six weeks after he won the lottery, and he would have continued on if it hadn't been for all the customers hassling him about staying at his minimum wage job when he was a millionaire. The biggest thing that has changed since Luke went back to the same McDonald's branch is that now he takes a taxi to work and back instead of walking. Oh yeah, and he has a Rolex and a really big house. Number 3. William Post the Third. William Post the Third won $16.2 million from the lottery. He also died many years later due to respiratory failure, apparently with a heart full of despair. He had not had a great life between winning the lottery in 1988 and dying in 2006. Just five years after winning the Pennsylvania lottery, William told news sources that nobody realizes the nightmare that can come from all that money. However, these problems are not universal. For example, William had a brother who tried to hire a contract killer to murder him and his sixth, yes, his sixth wife. He also had a landlady who forced him to give her a third of his jackpot. Plus, Williams was convicted of an assault charge after he shot a gun at a man trying to collect debt from his home in Pennsylvania. Then he went bankrupt and at the very end had just a million dollars. And of course, William spent that as well before going 100% broke. Keep in mind that William really did create this nightmare for himself. Within three months of winning the lottery, he was $500,000 in debt. Then he purchased a mansion, two Harley Davidson motorcycles, a luxury camper, a sailboat that cost nearly $300,000, several cars, a few houses, and of course, the traditional giant pickup truck. And these things can add up, especially when your ex-landlady stole a third of your winnings. Number 2. Vivian Nicholson In 1961, Vivian Nicholson was 25 years old, divorced, a mother to three children, and she worked in West Yorkshire, making only around $5 a week. However, everything changed in just one day. Her and her second husband, who at the time had been a minor, won roughly $5 million worth of today's currency. When asked by a journalist at the time what she would do with all that money, Vivian said she would spend, 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 and this actually rocketed her to fame. In the United Kingdom, she earned an instant 15 minutes in the spotlight. Everyone in the country seriously envied her, but then things took a turn. She spent the money, drank the money, and within four years, she had no money left. She also didn't have a husband anymore because he died after losing control of a Jaguar he'd purchased with all that money. Now her husband was dead and Vivian had a horrible drinking problem and no more money to drink with. Rather than being envied by the nation, she was now absolutely despised. And where do these types of people go? Well, Vivian became a stripper in a nightclub. And it gets even weirder. She allegedly moved to Malta, was deported after hitting a police officer, was placed inside of a mental home back in England to escape her third husband, and finally became a Jehovah's Witness. Vivian Nicholson then died after being crippled by dementia in 2015. But hey, you can't say she didn't live a colorful life. Number 1. Kaylee Rogers Kaylee Rogers was the youngest person ever in Britain to win the lottery. She was only 16 years old and living in foster care when she won the lottery jackpot in 2003. She'd been making roughly $5 an hour as a checkout girl and immediately quit her job. 
As a young woman, she was obviously going to spend quite a bit of that money. She spent a fortune on clothing, tattoos, and sports cars. And The Sun even reported that she spent roughly a quarter of a million dollars on drugs. She also spent lots of money on holidays, gifts for boyfriends, money to family members, and of course, a great big bungalow. But according to Kaylee herself, the next decade was terrible and amazing. She had a series of gold-digging boyfriends, and after way too much partying, she went broke. By 2003, she had only around $2,000 left in her bank account. Now, Kaylee insists that she's happier than ever and is living a normal life. She's also trying to get the UK government to raise the age limit for the national lottery. According to some news sources, gambling in the United Kingdom is now more popular among children than skateboarding. And many professionals believe that young people are being enticed into habitual betting that could ruin them for life. Today, Kaylee is in her early 30s and has three children. What exactly she's doing for work has not been reported. However, she does seem happy enough, so it's a nice end to the story. This strange fish was caught by a woman in upstate New York named Debbie Geddes. She reeled in what appeared to be a fish with two mouths last year in Lake Champlain. When she felt something bite, Geddes got excited. I actually commented, I hope it's as big as it feels, the Plattsburgh resident told Fox News. When we got it into the boat, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Two mouths, and yet this fish was healthy and thriving. After capturing a few photos of the fish, Geddes released it back into the lake. Much to her surprise, the pictures went viral on social media, earning thousands of likes and shares within a short time after being posted. Social media users debated over what may have caused the fish's double mouth deformation, with Geddes suggesting that a previous injury, perhaps from another fish, was to blame. Others blame pollution, citing Lake Champlain's long-standing ill reputation for more or less being a sewage dump. Number 10. Short-Nosed Lancet Fish There was once a boy who caught a sea dragon. At least, that's certainly what the photo looks like. The truth is that the boy didn't actually catch a sea dragon. He caught a short-nosed lancet fish, which is essentially the same thing. This is one of the strangest and most alluring fish found in Alaskan waters. It looks like something birthed from the twilight zone. The fish has fanged jaws, huge eyes, a sail fin that makes it look very much like a dragon, and they can grow to be 7 feet long. The lancet fish is one of the biggest deep sea fish of all time, living mainly in the Bering Sea of Alaska. As for the kid who caught the sea dragon, not much is really known about where the photograph was taken or what exactly transpired. But he's not the only one to have ever done it. Many people have caught this dinosaur-like fish before, and we don't really know much about these mysterious creatures, other than they have very gelatinous muscles that aren't really that tasty. However, there is another fish that people say looks like a dragon, the pike. A guy in Kazakhstan caught not one, but two pike that actually had horns on their head. Why? Nobody knows, but the locals said they must be mutant due to toxic chemicals found in the water caused by a nearby mine. What did he decide to do? Well, he ate them anyways. Number 9. Monster Eel A monster eel has been fished out of the water in New Jersey, and it's terrifying the internet. This thing is horrendous! It's known as a sea lamprey, and it's basically a giant leech or an underwater vampire. In fact, the photos that have been circulating of this worm from hell are like something out of a sci-fi thriller, specifically one of the alien movies. But alas, sea lampreys are actually quite common. The guy who caught this giant one was fishing when he saw it slithering through the water and shot it using his bow and arrow. After all, who doesn't take a bow and arrow with them out on a boat? He managed to catch the lamprey and bring it back into his boat to pose with him for some pictures. And you can see that the animal is completely covered in blood, likely from the arrow that was shot through his body. And the blood was probably from its last victim. You can also see that it has the most horrifying teeth in the world. While most lamprey measure three feet long, this one is quite a bit bigger. It could be a mutant. Number 8. Giant Hammerhead Shark It's not every day you go fishing and accidentally catch a giant hammerhead shark, but that's exactly what happened at Padre Island in Texas, when a fisherman caught a hammerhead shark that measured 14 feet long. Not only is this the catch of a lifetime, it's the shark catch of multiple lifetimes. The shark was caught by a man named Poco Cedillo who normally releases the sharks after he catches them. However, this particular shark didn't make it. Cedillo and his team tried their best to release the shark back after it was caught, but the poor thing was already dead. It took this guy over one hour just to reel in the shark, and so it's no wonder that at some point during those 60 minutes of being dragged out of his home by a large hook, the shark perished. In the end, Mr. Cedillo donated the shark's meat. Number 7. The Sea Dragon 
We already discussed one sea dragon at the beginning that was actually a fish, but did you know that there is indeed a real sea dragon? This is the legit sea dragon, and during an underwater excursion, a marine biologist caught photos of something quite disturbing. Marine biologist Sherry Maris from Australia uploaded a video that she took of a sea dragon caught inside of a plastic bag, still swimming around inside a tangle of underwater grass. The sea dragon is a type of critter related to a seahorse, and you can definitely see where it gets its name from. It's not clear how the animal ended up being caught in a plastic dress, but it's definitely not the kind of catch you want to see beneath the surface of the ocean. It's a grim reminder as to just how polluted the oceans have become. Number 6. Dinosaur Fish Next on the list is something a little less sad and a little more creepy. A fisherman off the coast of Norway recently caught a confusing creature that looks kind of like a dinosaur tadpole. The fisherman was looking for blue halibut when something huge began to tug at the end of his line. It took him about 30 minutes to reel the beast in, and it was roughly 2,600 feet deep. He was then shocked to find the unusual fish that had been tugging at his fishing line. This thing had eyes on its head as big as a squid. While people online were quick to point out that the fish was likely a rare or possibly extinct species, it actually turned out that the kid had caught a ratfish. Ratfish live in deep waters and are relatively harmless, but they are indeed super rare. And they're also super ugly. But according to the kid who caught it, the ratfish was also really tasty, and he knows because he took it home and he ate it. Number 5. A Colacanth This time we're talking about a real dinosaur. According to a report from Reuters, an Indonesian fisherman and his son just a few years ago actually caught the legendary colacanth, perhaps the most ancient fish in all of the world. The colacanth was thought to have gone extinct way back in the day of the dinosaurs, but we've also known for a few decades that that isn't true. These creatures are still alive and they're still swimming through the oceans, but it is incredibly rare to spot one, never mind to actually hook one and pull it into your boat. The fishermen in Indonesia actually kept it in a quarantine pool, hoping to release it back into the ocean, but unfortunately it died before that could happen. If you want to know just how rare of a catch this is, the last documented colacanth caught by a fisherman was in 1998 in a shark net. They were only rediscovered around 60 years ago. And up until 1938, these fish were believed to have been extinct 80 million years ago. They've had a pretty good run considering some colacanth fossils date back 360 million years. Number 4. Goblin Shark You've undoubtedly seen the horrifying face of a goblin shark. These creepy things are all over the internet, and they're almost too horrifying to be real. But hold on to your socks because a shrimper actually caught one. According to a report from CNN, the goblin shark was captured by a fella named Carl about halfway through his 18-day fishing trip. His original estimates put the goblin shark at about 20 feet. That's a seriously impressive beast. Goblin sharks typically live around 3,000 feet deep and feed primarily on live squid and fish. And just like the 36 million year old colacanth we just talked about, catching one is ridiculously rare. This was only the second instance of a goblin shark being caught in the Gulf of Mexico. These are not the kinds of sharks that end up on someone's fishing line. In fact, it was such a shocking discovery that even after 50 years of fishing, Carl told news sources he never in his life saw something so horrifying spill out of his net. And all he'd been hoping for was some shrimp. Number 3. Fishing from the Balcony this next strange catch is not so much about the catch itself, but more about the way in which it was made. While most of us would get on a boat if we felt like going fishing, a man in Dubai actually caught a fish from his balcony while locked inside during quarantine. Rather than just sit still and wait to be let out of his house again, he grabbed his fishing gear, threw a line into the river a few stories below his apartment, cracked open a beer, and caught a fish. The video quickly went viral, and it's unlikely the man continued fishing. After all, his neighbors probably didn't appreciate having fish slime splashed across their windows as the guy reeled the fish in from the river. It's a pretty amazing feat though, but probably not something you could get away with every night of the week. Uh, then again, it is one way to avoid going shopping while stuck in quarantine. Number 2. All the Fish A man in North Carolina has caught more strange fish than anyone else. There are some people who are passionate about fishing, and then there's a guy named Steve Wozniak. This guy recently achieved the milestone of catching 1,000 species of fish, and he did this by traveling to 63 countries and 37 states in the US. In his most recent interview, he actually said he was up to 1,008 species. 
And you should see some of these freaky fish the guy has caught at the end of his rod. Forget about marlin, halibut, and perch, this guy goes to Portugal and catches moray eels. He's even caught the sarcastic fringehead, one of the strangest and most bizarre fish in the world. And he's also caught a parrotfish and a wolffish, both of which are ridiculously rare animals to catch in the ocean. When it comes to strange catches, Steve is the king. He's even claimed 15 International Game Fish Association world records by catching species that had never been previously caught and submitted for record consideration. Basically, Steve is the Tiger Woods of strange fish. Number 1. Sharkhead Off the coast of New South Wales, a fisherman pulled in something extraordinary. Well, maybe not as extraordinary as it was completely disgusting. This fisherman goes by the name of Jason, and he reeled in about half a shark. Specifically, he caught the front half of a mako shark, nothing but its head. While this is definitely just another day in Australia, it's still an absolutely absurd thing to catch on the end of your line. It's also sparked a serious debate about what happened to the other half of the fish. Whatever took a bite out of the mako shark must have been enormous. And that's because the mako shark Jason caught had likely been 12 feet long and over a thousand pounds. This is not the type of fish that other fish just bite in half. Some people speculate that it could have been an orca whale, as they have been known to viciously massacre sharks in high numbers. Orca whales are indeed the apex predators of the ocean. However, Jason believes it could have been a tiger shark, as they can grow to be roughly twice the size of a mako. At the end of the day, it didn't really matter what chomped the fish in half. The point is that poor Jason only caught half a fish. Imagine the disappointment when you reel up nothing but a shark head. That's super creepy. One of the worst things you can do on a cruise ship besides commit some kind of heinous crime is jump over the edge. A young man from Vancouver recently did just that. And while he definitely earned a quick flash of internet fame when the video of him leaping off a Royal Caribbean cruise ship went viral, he's also now banned for life from ever getting on one of their boats again. He could also be facing legal consequences for his dramatic actions. In a statement from Royal Caribbean, they said that the man's behavior was stupid and reckless, and that neither him nor his companions will ever be allowed to sail with them again. The jumper's name is Nick Nadev, and he leapt off the 11th deck of the Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. This is the largest cruise ship in the entire world, and jumping from the 11th deck is no small feat. It's essentially like jumping off the 11th story of a building, except rather than falling on concrete, you at least hit the ocean. The incident took place while the vessel was docked in Nassau. Nick climbed onto the railing of the balcony while his friends chuckled in the background, and then he plunged more than 100 feet into the waters below. He was definitely drunk at the time, as that's a very common occurrence on most cruise ships, and he apparently could barely walk for three days after smacking into the water. The local police in Nassau were called, but nobody pressed any charges. Unfortunately, Nick and his friends were kicked off the boat and had to find their own way home from Nassau. At least he survived. Number 9. An Unfortunate Tumble It's one thing to jump off a cruise ship on purpose, but here's a guy who accidentally fell from a cruise ship. But it gets even crazier than that. According to CNN, the man fell off his cruise ship and was rescued by a different cruise ship over five hours later. It all began when the unarmed man tumbled off a Royal Caribbean cruise ship while it was sailing off the coast of Cozumel in Mexico. When the passengers on a Disney cruise ship passing by spotted the man flailing around in the water, he was subsequently rescued. The man claimed that he had no idea how he fell into the water, but it's extremely lucky that he was rescued at all, considering he was there in the middle of the ocean. If the Disney vessel had not come by when it had, the man likely would have drowned. Plus, he was already lucky for not breaking his neck when he tumbled off the first ship. And for that matter, how he tread water for five hours straight? That's another miracle. He was discovered at 7.30 in the morning. Passengers on the Disney vessel threw life preservers into the water to try and help him. He was then fished from the water and given medical attention before eventually being flown back to the United States. Number 8. A Suspicious Vanishing in August of 2004, a woman named Marion Carver boarded a ship with celebrity cruises in Seattle, bound for Alaska. She thought it would be fun to travel alone, but things started to get weird when Marion's daughter could not get a hold of her. The woman's daughter ended up filing a missing persons report with the local police in Massachusetts. It wasn't for a full week that the police finally discovered a credit card transaction showing that Marion had gone on a cruise. The family later discovered that a man on the celebrity cruise's ship had reported her missing just shortly into the cruise. Most of her belongings had already been disposed of, and it seemed like before the family could even investigate, Marion's disappearance had been swept under the rug. 
To this day, nobody knows what happened to Marion after she boarded the cruise ship. She certainly never made it to Alaska and definitely never made it home. Royal Caribbean Cruises, the owner of Celebrity Cruises, claimed that no foul play was involved surrounding Marion's disappearance, but the family is not so sure. They think something happened to her, they just don't know what. According to data collected from a professor in the School of Social Work, there have been at least 300 people who've fallen overboard in cruise ships since 2000, and there have been roughly 50 people who've gone missing under mysterious circumstances, just like Marion Carver while on a cruise ship. So what about you? Have you ever gone on a cruise? I've always wanted to. Did something strange or mysterious or alarming happen while you were there? Definitely tell me about it. Let me know in the comments below. And then be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's lots of amazing videos coming out all the time right here on World List. Number 7. Cruise Ship Killer? On the cruise ship Disney Wonder, a British crew member named Rebecca Corium went missing on March 27th of 2011, and some believe that she was murdered. Not only do they believe Rebecca was murdered, but they also believe the cruise ship operators could be playing a part in covering up the gruesome details. Yes, hundreds of people have vanished because of falling overboard on cruise ships, but this can be attributed to drunken passengers. Rebecca had over a year of experience on the Disney cruise ship and would not have accidentally tripped and fallen into the water and died. According to a lone bohemian police officer who was trying desperately to get justice for Rebecca in 2011, the investigation was littered with faults. And according to the private investigator hired to look into the mysterious disappearance of Rebecca, it should have been considered a murder investigation. Most honest investigators believe that Rebecca was attacked and then her body was dumped into the ocean. But to this day, nobody knows who could have attacked and murdered Rebecca. Number 6. Kidnapped by the Crew? In a horrendous story from 1998, Amy Lynn Bradley not only vanished from a cruise ship, she was considered kidnapped. It happened on March 24th when her father had woken at around 5.30 in the morning and noticed her there, so she was definitely still around in the early morning hours. But 30 minutes later, when her father returned to the room, she was gone. Amy Lynn Bradley vanished from her private cabin and was never seen from again. But here's where the kidnapping comes into play. The night before the disappearance, Amy and her brother partied in the ship's nightclub. Amy's brother apparently left the club while Amy was hanging out with one of the members of the cruise ship band. Her brother later claimed that Amy was given special attention, not only by the members of the band, but also by the staff of the cruise ship. Amy's family alerted the workers on the cruise ship and the boat was docked. The entire vessel was inspected thoroughly, but nobody could find Amy. This led the family to believe that the crew had kidnapped her, but of course, these accusations have never been confirmed. Number 5. Murder on the High Seas A man from Utah named Kenneth Manzanares is facing life in prison after he turned an ordinary cruise ship trip into a murder scene. It all happened in 2017, when Kenneth and his wife got into an argument after she told him on the cruise ship that she wanted a divorce. Bad timing, but still probably not worth a murder. He ordered their 22-year-old daughter out of the room, and moments later, there was a scream from the balcony. The couple's daughter rushed back inside and witnessed Kenneth beating her mother to death. Security guards arrived quickly after. There was obviously quite a bit of chaos, and even though medics tried to save the woman's life, she died of blunt force trauma. Kenneth was charged with murder in the first degree and will likely receive life in prison. Number 4. A Horrible Birth if you're nine months pregnant, you probably shouldn't be getting on a cruise ship. And yet a woman from Indiana in October of 2011 gave birth alone on a cruise ship during a trip to St. Martin. She never called for help, she didn't tell anyone else on board, and the baby subsequently died. She placed the newborn child in a towel after delivering it and tucked it under her bed, where a cleaning crew later found the body. An autopsy was done that revealed the child had been born alive and it could have been saved if it had the proper care. But the woman named Alicia Kerr, who had been 24 at the time, was apparently scared, confused, and she didn't know what to do. She ended up giving birth to that baby in a bathroom all by herself on a cruise ship and was so distressed that she watched helplessly as her own baby perished. According to Alicia's defense attorney, she had only recently discovered that she was pregnant and thought she was only six weeks along in her pregnancy. Even when she began to give birth, she just thought she was overheated. The birth happened exceptionally quickly and Alicia ended up using a razor blade to cut through the umbilical cord. She then spent roughly two hours in the bathroom with the baby trying to keep it alive, but according to her, it didn't cry. Its eyes wouldn't open and she eventually gave up because she just didn't know what to do. She was sentenced to a single day in prison for the crime of involuntary manslaughter. 
Since the incident, Alicia has given birth again. She now has a healthy daughter. Number 3. The Diamond Princess Perhaps the worst cruise anyone could have been on in 2020 was the Diamond Princess. The trip began to turn sour three days in. China had shut down all travel from the interior city of Wuhan. The world was in panic, and the passengers were relaxing in the sunshine. It was on February 2nd that a passenger who had left the ship eight days earlier was found to have tested positive for the emerging coronavirus. The captain was told to hurry back to Tokyo Bay so the passengers and crew could be screened and then released. And most of us know what happened next. There were 2,666 passengers and 1,045 crew members on board the Diamond Princess. That equals 3,711 people. It started with 10 infections on day one, 10 infections the next day, 41 infections on the third day, and 66 infections following that. It ended up being one of the worst infectious disasters to ever happen on a cruise ship. 712 people ended up being infected on board and 14 of the passengers died. The ship spent 27 days in Tokyo Bay while the virus ravaged just about everyone on board, causing massive amounts of damage. Most people ended up going home in the end, but they certainly got way more than they bargained for when they stepped onto that boat. But perhaps what is most fascinating about the Diamond Princess was that at the time, the ship accounted for over half of the cases of COVID-19 documented outside of mainland China. And that's just on one boat, and only because of intense testing. We soon found out that the rest of the world was in the same kind of disastrous situation. Number 2. Slippery Fingers it doesn't get much more unfortunate than the story of Salvatore Anello, the grandfather who accidentally let his granddaughter slip through his fingers and fall to her death. Salvatore later pled guilty to negligent homicide. The grandfather was on vacation with his son, his daughter-in-law, and their toddler baby. The grandfather was playing with the little girl near a window that he thought was closed. Salvatore was colorblind and let the girl go, thinking that she would be resting against the glass. But instead, she fell 11 stories and landed on the concrete dock. She was pronounced dead immediately at the scene. The dead girl's parents supported the grandfather throughout the court proceedings and refused to file charges against him, as they surely knew it was not intentional or entirely his fault. Salvatore did not receive any jail time, but he did plead guilty so the entire chapter could just be put behind them. Naturally, the family has since sued Royal Caribbean Cruises, accusing them of gross negligence because there was an 11th floor window wide open with absolutely no warning. As of yet, it's not been reported whether the family won against the cruise line in court. Number 1. Life in Prison This terrifying tale should be a script for a horror movie. A couple of teenagers broke up and drifted apart, then reunited three decades later, fell in love as adults, got married, and then suddenly one of them murdered the other one and left them on the bathroom floor of a cruise ship. Oh yes, the end of this story goes from romance to horror very quickly. According to the Baltimore Sun, Robert McGill of Los Angeles murdered his wife Shirley McGill while on a carnival cruise ship. Robert was later sentenced to life in prison by a United States District Judge. It all happened on July 14, 2009. The apparently happy couple were on a five-day cruise heading to Mexico. It was Robert's 55th birthday. He drank quite heavily in Cabo during the day before reboarding the ship for the venture home. There isn't much known about what happened between the time Robert and his wife got on the boat and then Robert strangled her to death. But what makes this story truly shocking is that after Robert left his wife dead on their cabin floor, he changed his clothes, went up to the deck, smoked a cigar, and had another drink. He sat down with another couple. They asked where his wife was and he told them plainly that he had just murdered her. Robert was arrested the moment the ship docked in San Diego. Surely there was some type of mental illness going on with that man. So, what's your opinion about these crazy cruise ship stories? What do you think causes people to go missing, and why do you think people turn into murderers on cruise ships? Is there something about being on the ocean? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to come back soon, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out.